hello my fellow car modelers, how are you doing today? I'm back from my vacation. Oh, it, was, it was wonderful. So I'm back at it at work, back at it at my modeling, and I'm back at it at bringing videos. So here I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But first, let's do an update on that Volvo that I was working on over my vacation. And I really didn't get that far with it. I got into doing a few other things and hanging out with the family. I got a little bit of progression on it, and I want to show it to you real fast. And then we're going to get back to an adventure in building a model car with the 66 Malibu. Why don't we jump right back in on it and let's get back all to normal. After this, then we're going to get back into Lucas kits and we're going to have my vlogs. We're going to blow my head off on and, you know, whatever. So come on, let's take a look at the Volvo and what I got done with it. And then we're going to get back right onto that Malibu and uh, everything's back to normal. I, I, kind of normal. Not really that normal, but uh, we're back at it. We'll go with that, right? So I didn't get as far as I would have liked with the Volvo over my vacation, but uh, I want to show you what I did, and then we're going to get right back onto that Malibu because that's what we want to get done. When the Malibu's finished, I'm going to get back onto this car because this is something I really want to get done, and I, I'm enjoying this project, but Malibu comes first. What I did get done is I got the chassis all painted in Tamiya Pure White, and then cleared with Tamiya Clear. And then I did with Tamiya Flat Black the strap for the fuel tank. And if you look right here, I got the engine in and I basically just painted it with Tester's Model Master Metalizers. They are an airbrush only as they say on the bottle, but I really do like to hand paint with them. The strokes vanish and I can get real detailed with them. It's something that I've always enjoyed doing, and I'm going to cover that in a later episode. What I do with Model Master metalizers. But I do like the effect that I get with them. And there's another angle of it. So, I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. I've got some of the rear suspension all painted up and ready to go. With the detail of the bolts. All done with Model Master metalizers. The front suspension. Got the lower control arms painted. I've got the chassis portions which is tubular, all painted up with the Tamiya Pure White and then cleared. And then I'm going to take some bare metal foil aluminum that I have and I'm going to do this whole plate in that. As far as interior, I just got the, again, with the Pure White and the clear, I got the interior all painted. And then I'm going to mask off and I'm going to do the door panels in try to give them a look of carbon fiber or they just might be a matte black or semi-gloss black I haven't decided yet something I saw in the race car and uh, here's something that's really cool again to show you with the effects you can get with testers model master metalizers is I've got the exhaust done with a couple of different colors I used their buffing aluminum plate paint on the muffler and the resonator and then I lightly buffed it with a tissue. And then I used the stainless steel that's buffable for the exhaust pipes. Again, putting on there and then buffing it with just a tissue paper. And this is all hand brushed on. I didn't, uh, I didn't airbrush any of that. And you can see they kind of put sort of in place. It does have that real steel metallic look that I was going for. So pretty pleased with that. That's pretty much as far as I got with the Volvo. So let's move on to getting back onto the Malibu project. So we're getting back at the Malibu here and uh, one thing I wanted to show you is I had gone ahead and cleaned all of the injection pin marks off of this engine mount that is a major part of the structure of the front framework. As you will see, it goes into these tabs. This is why I had to retain that section of the front frame rails. 
so you can see how that all fits in together and we're going to get this going I'm going to complete the rest of the tubing on this one and then we'll get back and show you I'm going to go ahead and primer it so we're going to see what needs as far as body work done on these when I'm done putting all the tubing on and we'll get right back to this and then what we'll do is we'll mount the completed front frame assembly into the firewall and we're going to have this all together still got to figure out what color scheme I want to go with we still haven't even figured out the overall look of the car and color and everything I've gotten a lot of suggestions from you people it is tipping to us going with that little bit of a beater look but I think if I'm going to go in that direction I want it to be road worthy. I don't want it just sitting there on the side of the house rotting away. I want it to be a functional car, maybe just a bit weathered up. That is if we go in that direction, but we still have to come up with what color I want to paint the frame and this firewall and everything underneath the flip nose. Up for suggestions, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to go back to the internet and maybe look up some pictures of street freaks from the 70s and get some inspiration. So off to the World Wide Web so we can see if we can find some good pictures that will inspire us on what to do under the flip nose. Let's see what we found. Now I'm not necessarily looking for 66 Malibus. I just wanted to look at other flip noses. I tried to find ones that were from back in the 70s but I found a lot of stuff that was more modern but kind of done to look retro and this really has that look and this is probably a good way to go. Just simple kind of semi-gloss flat black or something like that and it's simple has very much the, almost the same kind of setup that the Malibu has so that's a good thought right there this is a little bit more of a show car still very of the times uh, going with body color that is a good possibility it actually would be really easy because you're shooting the whole body and the firewall would just stay body color again it all depends on what I'm gonna go with as far as the finish on the car but I got to get all that stuff painted and we haven't come up with what we want the finish of the car to be this car this is a 66 Nova that I believe I've seen this car in person I think this is here in Phoenix I've seen this car run at the drag strip and it is wicked it's a very purpose-built no bones about it all about functionality so yeah just get a can of Krylon shoot the firewall and all the frame and everything and be done with the drop your engine let's go racing now on to this 57 Chevy pretty simple flat black underneath it seems to be what a lot of these cars were nobody really flashed them up unless they were going to be taking them to car shows look at that just primer in a uh, gloss black frame you look at this one and it looks like they got sheet metal kind of along the firewall. I don't really want to go that route, but I do like the way the rest of the engine bay looks. And here we go. Just good old fashioned semi-gloss or flat black. Simple. Just blow it on there so it looks decent because we're going to be running the heck out of this car. So I'm not building a show car. And here's a real simple one. It doesn't look like they even tried. <laughs> I kind of like that, you know, who cares? Let's go run fast. This does look like it's from back in the day. I would say this is probably the late 70s. And I remember seeing these as a kid a lot. And they would do it with the gloss plaque all on the frame and the firewall. And also, you know, that whole look of taking the color, whatever you go with, and bringing it into that whole area that usually gets covered up by the fender there where you see the door hinges and everything. This could be a time that you go with kind of a contrasting where the black would work out really good not going body color and then having whatever your body color is and you got a good contrast. Oh boy, decisions. I don't know what to do with this. So I want you guys to give me your thoughts down in the comments and uh, I'm going to be listening because well, I need some help with this. I can't make any decisions on my own. Let's hear from you. Now let's move on to the project. Well, there's something I want to go over again that was covered in the last episode, but... I think my fat little fingers here were in the way and you really couldn't see what I'm doing. So I want to be a little more out of the way so you can see it. What I want to do is I want to cut this tube to length and I'm going to show you my little technique I use in cutting tubing that gives you a nice straight even cut on the tube so you have a nice flat surface to butt up against the existing part you're going up against or just to have nice even cuts on tubing. So what we're going to do right now is I want to go from this existing tube here and butt up against it with the evergreen tubing plastic that we have and I want it to continue on to the end here creating the lower portion 
and extending this lower portion of the bar all the way out to the end. So with that we're going to go right up against there and I want to get the proper length so I'm basically kind of eyeball engineering it using my X-Acto blade as a straight edge measuring device of some sort here <laughs> and getting the exact length we need. So when I get it kind of pushed in and marked I know where to go. I can see my I can see the mark that I made. You probably can't see it, but I did make a bit of a slice of the length that I want. And I'm going to lay my X-Acto blade down on a nice flat surface. Keep it nice and straight and just roll. And what this does, it cuts in, makes a perfect cut straight across no angles or anything and you've got a nice clean cut on your tubing and I don't want to go all the way through I want to get it far enough to where I can just go snap 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 look at that that's pretty neat isn't it nice straight cut and now what I will have is I will have my piece the correct length. I'm going to get it all fitted up in there. And I got a nice flat surface on the end to create a nice butt up against the existing tube. That's another bit of scratch building 101 for you. And I'm glad I could help. So there you have it for this episode. Thanks a bunch for watching. Again, things have been blowing up for the channel. And I got to thank you guys for it. Thank you guys for subscribing. We're almost hitting that mark. Punch that like button and subscribe, and that's uh, that's just going to help the channel grow, and I can bring you more content. So, I really appreciate it. Send me the pictures of your models. I've been getting some in, and I'm going to be doing another video with viewers' models. And hey, I want to hear from you. Like I always say, I want to hear from you. So, let's uh, hear what you'd like to see me do, and we'll see you in the next video. Let's get started, but first, I want to go over that Volvo that I was working on over my holiday, or... First, I want to get going with... But first, I want to show you... Send it my way, and we'll, uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to go into that, I'll do that at the end. So come on, I'm going to show you that map. So come on, let's take... Okay, ready? <laughs> That's the one. Or something like that. Or something like that. I'm done.